extracts from my grandfather's autobiography. It's Warmer Down Below, all about, well, not all about, but a lot about tunnelling um, because he was a high-profile high civil engineer. The exploits of my then 16-year-old uncle, Rob, um, as a footman for the Marquess of Bath at the Queen's coronation in 1953. We have been sold two seats for the coronation on the centre of Parliament Square as a member of council of the Institution of Civils and hope to meet Bean among the Alsans in the same stand. These stands are being erected by John Merlam and Co Limited, for whom he worked, who have also done, and he was a director, who have also done the work inside the Abbey and the Annex for the fourth coronation running. The sanitary arrangements are formidable. Last time, the Queen of Somewhere refused to share her throne with anyone else, which caused confusion. I am told that a High Commissioner went in the wrong uniform and was mistaken by a Countess for an attendant. She rushed up to him and said, I want your help, and dragged him into the noble lady's compartment and said, Look there! And behold, her coronet had fallen into the pan. With great dexterity he drew his sword and with a combined lunge and parry retrieved it and handed it back on the sword's point. As some of you know, my junior son Robert went on a visit to Longleat in the Christmas term and was shown the coach of the Marquis of Bath and the footman's uniform. Last term, he and a friend looked up in Debrett's How to Address a Marquis and wrote, My dear Lord Marquis, my friend and I are 16 years old, 5 foot 10 and a half inches high and used to horses. We would like to offer our services to you as footman for the coronation, paying all our own expenses. The reply was an invitation to go over for a rehearsal. The dresses fitted them perfectly and they did a two mile trip on the back of the coach, pulled by brewer's horses from Birmingham and got the job against many other offers. They went over again and had another tryout to complete the equipment and were very well received. The Marquis then wrote, Dear Robert, could you and your friend possibly grow side whiskers and your hair long at the back for powdering? It is, I fear, a lot to ask of you as it may not go well with your fellows or headmaster or something to that effect. This dates it. October the 10th, 1953. In my last batch, I express uh, another letter. In my last batch, I expressed the hope of meeting Bean among the Alsans at the coronation. We did better than that. It turns out that he and Martita Hunt had been allotted seats next to us. You can imagine our delight on seeing him loom over the horizon, although Martita doesn't loom. Some members may have seen our photo in Picture Post and Life with the peers queuing up below and me diving into my wife's handbag for the rum badly needed. Well, the footmen in to the Marquis of Bath managed their duties very successfully. In our last number, readers will recollect that my junior son, Robert, 16, and a friend volunteered to act as his footmen. We brought them home with their hair looking frightful but the Union Club barbers trimmed it and the side whiskers to rights. On the Monday, Lord Bath arrived at Putney, bringing with him large tin cases full of uniforms and also liquid hair powder, and was very charming. At 4.45am on Coronation Day, his Bentley arrived and took away the footman looking marvellous in yellow cutaway coats, Robespierre hats, black breeches, white stockings and silver buttons, ropes, braids and fandangles. They also picked up the Marquis's butler and cook and dropped them in the West End where he had got them seats in a London club stand. And so to Paddington, Great Western Railway Mews 
where a large and disgruntled brewery coachman was helped to harness two very lovely steeds onto the coach. They then drove to Claridge's and picked up Lord Bath and standing smartly to attention on the back of the coach, spanked at a smart trot down St James's Street, Pall Mall and Whitehall among the cheers of the mob. Going down Whitehall, they passed the Duke of Devonshire's coach. The crowd roared with delight and Robert said his funkies did look sick. At this juncture, Lord Shrewsbury in the third of the private coaches had reached a standstill. His footman, a brother-in-law and a horsey major, had to get out and push. But as the horses refused, his lordship got in his car, which was following, and did the last 300 yards by car. Not so our side. They spanked round Parliament Square and the Marquis defied the police and insisted upon being dropped by St Margaret's entrance. We were just able to see the coach drive off back round the square with the footman really looking very smart on the back and the coach with a magnificent yellow hammer cloth over the driver's seat. We were then able to relax knowing they had got there. After the service, we walked with Bean and Martita to the Marsham Street car park where the coaches were parked. The coaches were directed by the police to go back via Lambeth Bridge, almost to the Elephant and Castle, back up Waterloo Bridge, Kingsway, Oxford Street, Poland Street, Great Marlborough Street. So we led them in our car, which was labelled exempted services. Lord Bath had footed it from the House of Lords to the car park, so having taken photos and had a crack or two, we set off. It was really rather an amusing sight. The streets were deserted until we got to Kingsway. We stuck in Great Marlborough Street at a jam in one of the Molem's barriers and the coach got a terrific cheer. One woman put her head in the window and said, Who are you? Bath replied, I'm the Marquis of Bath. Enjoyed yourself? Yes, thank you. I hope you have too. Isn't this fun? Holbein and Martita got loud cheers as well, looking so distinguished. Next day, the footmen were again picked up to try and get a colour photo, but the weather was too bad. So Lord Bath dropped them at the Union Club for a much needed haircut and shampoo, and they returned to school. He sent them each a pair of gold cufflinks, engraved Coronation Queen Elizabeth 1953, and autographed the other link, or rather his signature was facsimile. We had some telephone brushes with the press, but managed to shake them off as publicity was not the intention of the footman. I forgot to say that Merlums had an emergency gang sitting by in our office in the Abbey Cloisters and we had given them a television and I got the footman into the shed where they saw the whole service and procession. A gold stick in waiting was so impressed with their appearance when arriving that they had great difficulty in not being thrust straight into the abbey. I think it's a, it's a, lov a lovely story and it, and it brings that whole day into a different into a different perspective. So the cover is uh, from a seat cushion that my grandfather designed and stitched himself. It's a, a tapestry and um, portrays civil engineering in, in the round. Um, so thank you so much for joining us.